according to reports, one in three women in tech are reflecting on leaving the industry right now, like no other time, this is the time to make a brave career move. Welcome to the Celebrate Brave podcast. I'm Nicole Church Steinbach, your host and the international bravery coach for women in tech. I serve women all over the world to earn more money, create more opportunities, and thrive in the tech industry because tech needs all of us. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, brave people. Today, we are going to talk about the glass cliff, what it is, why it matters, why I'm talking about it right now, my lived experiences, and some some suggestions, some ideas of how you and we can address the glass cliff. Okay, so here's the thing. First of all, what is the glass cliff? The glass cliff is a phenomenon, and this is a direct quote from the research from Michelle K. Ryan and Alexander Haslam out of the UK. And the K in Michelle K. Ryan's name is really important to see the wealth of the research, the original research, but also how it has continued to develop over the last decade plus. Okay, the definition. The glass cliff is a phenomenon of women in leadership roles being likelier than men to achieve leadership roles during periods of crisis or downturn. Then there's a comma because the next part's the most important. When the chance of failure is the highest. I think their definition is pretty clear, but I'm going to amplify it a little bit. (laughs) So my lived experience was, hey, this fella who looks like us, sounds like us, went to the same school, speaks the same dialect, has all of these connections with us. He had three years and he messed it up. Now we're in a situation where we have got to reach compliance, outcome, client success, et cetera. So, hey, Nicole, person who, let's be real, I look German, who looks like us, doesn't sound like us, isn't married like us, isn't parenting like us, isn't caregiving like us, didn't go to the same schools and definitely doesn't speak the dialect. How about you take this as a stretch roll? You got nine months. Fell over there, took three years to mess it up. I've got nine months. And it's a stretch roll, meaning didn't get the title, didn't get the money, didn't know about the glass cliff, did not succeed. I did not succeed. That was one of the two very clear situations in my career that were absolutely examples of the glass cliff. There were others not as clear and, or I just got it done and was successful, but I've had two experiences in my career of the glass cliff. So I know of that, (laughs) which I speak. And before anybody gets super demotivated, I still had an awesome career. I've been to over 25 countries for work. I love what I do. I have relationships that go back 15. In fact, one of them, professional relationships, goes back 20 years, which both makes me very impressed but also feel very old. And it is a part of our experience right now. So the glass cliff is when women have the opportunity to step into a leadership role in periods of crisis. Hello, 2020, 2021, probably 2022 in many places in the world, all the way up to 2025, or downturn. Do I need to say more? Downturn. When the chance of failure is the highest. And if that doesn't kind of sum up our experience here in 2020, 2021, most likely 2022 and and beyond. No matter which industry you currently serve, no matter which industry, it has been a tough period of time. Can't say a year anymore because it's longer. And for us, 
who are in the tech industry or close to tech in a different industry, holy moly, kind kitties, are there an astonishing number of opportunities exploding in the market. It's incredible. It is incredible. One of my clients was saying they've actually, they don't even have the opportunity to check the job postings, ensure everything is without gender or race biased language. There's some great technology and research out there about how they do that. Before the posting is actually set to get pulled down because there are so many opportunities. Opportunities in actual tech companies, in the full tech stack, but also in other industries that (laughs) this experience has finally shown the fellows in power that they can hire as many people around them as they want to. But the folks who actually get the work done rely on tech and they better get their poo-poo together. They better integrate that tech. They better make the user experience better. They better make sure that it's stable, that their clients can use it and that it's usable everywhere. So y'all, the astonishing number, astonishing number of opportunities. So there's all these stretch opportunities for people who are in the same company and for whatever reason, don't want to leap out. Stretch opportunities. Remember what I said about my stretch opportunity, right? It was actually a glass cliff. There is visibility opportunities because you don't have to be in headquarters to do headquarter level work anymore. And side note, if you're at a company that is now talking about forcing people back into the office, go somewhere else. Bah, that is just nonsense based on control and insecurity of their own leadership. Back to the glass clip. And Relocations, individuals who are reflecting on a relocation back, quote unquote, home, whatever that means to them, and or into a low cost area, a small town, because you can do headquarter level work anywhere. Why not? Why not? But the one that I'm going to focus on right now are the transformational roles. Another thing that I'm hearing from so many organizations, leaders, connections, clients, et cetera, is that brand new product and people, leadership and expertise roles are being approved than ever before. Roles that have never existed that are focused on transformation of a product, of a system, of a process, of an organization, of a strategy, than ever before. So right now, right when one in three women, according to reports, one in three women in tech are reflecting on leaving the industry, Right now, like no other time, this is the time to make a brave career move. It's also the time where we are facing the biggest glass cliff shared by the most people for the longest time at any time in history. And by people, I mean people who have not been in traditional roles of power, and that includes women. The opportunity for life changing professional growth is an enormous tension and dichotomy with the agony of never, ever, 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 ever before extreme personal demands. And as the world has transformed, especially for mothers, for caregivers of our elders, for senior level women, for black women, we have never experienced so much disruption and so much opportunity at one time. And this is an enormous, enormous glass cliff. I shared on an earlier podcast, my proven how to make your next promotion inevitable process. 
And inside of that, you got to know that you can't make your promotion inevitable or your success inevitable inside of the system you are right now. Sometimes you have to decide this is going to be my on-ramp. I am making this happen. I'm staying in tech and I'm going for a huge transformational role or I'm relocating. And then you got to figure out how to make it happen. And it might not be with your employer. It might not be with your function. It might be something you can never imagined. And it's gorgeous. So the glass cliff and lived experience. I shared quickly the one where I failed. I failed. I discovered later that the sponsorship, the person before that had failed, wasn't available for me. In fact, I didn't even know to ask about the sponsorship. The budget, while bigger, was not enough for a turnaround. I didn't know. I didn't know to ask. I didn't know to talk about that. I didn't know to research it. And I also learned, (laughs) I also learned That no matter had I succeeded nor I failed, it wasn't going to remain in my hands. Now, that last one, that was just immoral and unethical. And I hope that that wakes up the person and the people who drove that at night every once in a while. (laughs) Not every night. I'm not that rude. (laughs) Just every once in a while. Because I didn't know the questions to ask. I got pitched a really cool opportunity. And I asked the questions for an individual contributor stepping into a role that was incrementally growing. But I didn't know the questions to ask when things had gone to hell. Things were on fire. (laughs) Poo-poo had hit the fan and was all over the room. I didn't know the questions to ask. I didn't know the relationships to build. I didn't understand how to shift the reporting. And because of all of that, and quite frankly, neither did the people who were actually at the end of the day accountable for the success of this effort. And if they did, well, then that was really crappy of them not to actually support me. When you're given an opportunity for a big step forward, When you deserve it, when you've earned it, you still may not know exactly what to ask. You may not know what to suss out. And that's okay. Hundreds of people have been there before you. When it comes to the glass cliff, here are some initial suggestions. And I really hope that people who've experienced this will will send some of your experiences. And if you have a story you want to share, I'd love to have you onto the podcast. So here are some suggestions. Number one, what does success look like in four months? Normally I suggest six months or 12 months, but in a turnaround situation, in a glass cliff situation, you got to be more tight. And no matter what the answer is, no matter what the answer is, how is that data collected? Who controls that data? Who decides what the report looks like? And how is that reported out? Another glass cliff aspect. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how much change are you looking for? And then I want you to break that down, please, into tech or systems, processes, standards, and people. Because if you run into a situation like so many other women on the glass cliff, one of the biggest things that needs to change are the people. In my glass cliff situation, the one that I failed, the person in finance genuinely had an issue with women. Genuinely. He told me this. He told me this straight out. But there was a relationship dynamic there where he wasn't going anywhere. He wasn't going anywhere. And so when there's a personnel 
or a behavior shift. And the folks around the glass cliff position have no appetite to actually change. Keep walking. Keep walking. Number three, what support and investment will I receive in this position? Whoo-wee! I didn't know to ask this for way, way, way too long. I would say things like, what's your personal development strategy? What sort of offers are available? And those are really valuable questions when you're an individual contributor. But when you are in a position with a great opportunity for failure, when you are the first of your kind, or maybe, you know, the first 10 to step into this type of role in this situation, in this this infrastructure, in this company, in this organization, that's not enough. Who do I have access to? How early does coaching begin? Do I choose my own coach? What kind of assessments are available for myself and for the people around me? Do I have an HR person with a name assigned to me? How much of their time is available to me? What is the conflict resolution process? How does escalation work? especially in a matrix situation or a shared board situation. How does conflict resolution happen? How often is budgeting done? If budgeting done is done every year and you're in a transformational role with a high risk of failure, keep walking. These are the types of questions in the interviewing cycle, which is a conversational cycle where they want you and you want to grow. They want your skills. They want your insight. Perhaps, especially now, they want your identity. We see all kinds of announcements about specific identities stepping into specific roles for the first time ever. (sighs) Never mind their skills. (laughs) Anywho. I'm holding that rant back. (laughs) So those are some of the initial questions. But what if a glass cliff situation just gets thrown onto your desk? So that's what happened to me in my second very clear glass cliff situation. It just kind of got thrown onto my desk, right? Because success leads to more work in unhealthy organizations and management situations. So here are some of the things that worked for me in that situation. I had a lot of end user conversations and interviews. I also had the two most junior people on my team sit in on those and create, and this is going to sound really simple, and create a word cloud as well as a detailed report. And then I sent them out to talk to even more end users. I want to stress that this project, this glass cliff project, this was not a tech end user. This was a process and change end user. And with every iteration, with every iteration, I got five minutes. And when I say every iteration, I believe it was every other week and sometimes every week. So I had two people out there and this was their job. They were talking to end users. They were interviewing them and then they were updating the report, updating the statistics, updating the word cloud. And every other week, I would throw it up for five minutes. And that was my update. This is what our end users are saying. 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 And here's the stats over and over and over again. This is what it would cost to do this. And this is the budget I have because you guys budget annually. Makes no sense in a transformational situation. I worked with a coach outside of the company. And I worked with a coach inside of the company. I did a lot of therapeutic work at this point in time. And I spent a lot more time than anybody wanted to see me spending in asking questions and dropping names. Usually I'm not a huge fan of dropping names 
However, in situations where you're basically set up to fail, make that network in every single room. Bring the network in and say, I've invited so-and-so as an extra guest to our meeting so that they can have an even better view of how we're working to serve them. Build your rugby team. Have you ever seen a rugby team? And rugby, I can't actually watch games because it's too much for me. I get too worried about everything. I don't watch American football either. But have you ever watched them rush? Have you ever watched them pile up? I'm sure there's an informal word for it. That's what you want to do. You want to be running at the spear at the top and bringing lots and lots of names into that space. Here's the other thing. And this I did not do, but I did do it on my last time. The last glass cliff opportunity I was given at least once a week, reflect on the week. What went well, what didn't go well. What could be better? Do that for at least six minutes. Why? You can do it into your voice recording and then delete it. You can write it in a personal journal. If you use a document, make sure you password lock that document. But this is why six minutes. You'll have two minutes where you'll skirt around in your head and you'll regurgitate all these obligations, all these shoulds, what other people are saying. But this is about you. What went well for you? What didn't go well? And what could be better? You'll spend about two minutes, you know, between your head and your heart, and you'll be lying to yourself and ignoring those things that make you feel uncomfortable because that's what we do. We're humans. It's part of the process. And it's those last two minutes, and you can do it with bullet points, You, like I said, a voice recorder, whatever. It's those last two minutes where a good 95% of the people who do this exercise, either with me or on their own, where they reach into the, the juicy, the true, the instinctual, the soul answers that are unique only to you. And why do I want you to do this? Well, I want you to do this all the time. I'll tell you that my clients who build this and their positive intelligence skills and their sage skills, they leap forward time and time and time again, and they really enjoy their lives, right? But why do I want you to do this inside of a glass cliff? I want you to do this inside of a glass cliff because you need to know when it's time to walk away, when it's time to walk away. Glass cliffs are called a cliff because you fall off of them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone listening to this has stood at the edge of a cliff. Did you just spontaneously fall off of it? Probably not. (laughs) Would you have just randomly jumped or would you need a push to fall off of it? When you take these six minutes, at least six minutes, at least once a week, you will see the hands, the norms, the processes, the systems that are inching you closer and closer and closer to push you off the glass cliff. It's okay to stay. It's okay. And it's okay to jump jump onto a different rock, jump onto a passing eagle. (laughs) And it's okay to go around that which is pushing you towards the edge of the glass cliff and walk back down the cliff. Without reflection, you're not going to see what your options are, how close you are to the edge, and what you want to do. You're just going to put your head down and do a really, really good job. And maybe you'll succeed. And maybe you'll be like me. And one time you got pushed. And maybe you'll be like me. And one time it wasn't worth it at all. Without reflection, you'll stumble into it. 
with reflection, you'll make a conscious choice. And that's the power of the glass cliff for you. Standing on the shoulders of your ancestors and being a good ancestor to the generations behind. The glass cliff. Know about it. Identify it. Be clear about when you're on it. And know when it's time not to be anymore. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Celebrate Brave podcast. If you're ready to build your brave, to live a life you love and create a career that matters to you, reach out. Together, we can spend time one-on-one to explore how I can help you. And until then, share this episode with people in your life, people who can join our movement to redefine brave, how we identify it, experience it, and celebrate it.